It's a visual assessment. Part of what the soil health card's about is, is getting people to use their senses to collect information. There are 10 tests that probably take, once you're familiar with it, somewhere in the order of about 20 minutes to half an hour to do those tests. Repeat those tests at five different sites because the risk at going to one site is that it's atypical. The same as you would collect your soil tests over time for chemical levels, you have a collection of measurements for soil physics uh, biology. We use a quadrant modified from a coat hanger. Then we work our way into the soil tests. The first test is area of ground cover. Ground cover is essential. It provides protection for the soil. If we take away the ground cover, it exposes it to the elements and the elements make it a really harsh, um, destructive environment for things to live in. And so ground cover is essential to protect that soil environment because what the plants do is that they transfer the energy from the sun to the organisms in the soil and that energy is needed to drive that soil system and make it work. We then go into the quadrat and count from the outside in the different types of organisms that we see there. How many organisms usually relates very strongly with the amount of ground cover that we've got because that's their habitat and their food source. Next, we will look at the penetrometer. This is a measure of soil structure. They're hard to bend, but occasionally you'll find some soils that will do that. The next test is a water infiltration rate test, so again relates to soil structure. It's a piece of pipe and it's a measured amount of water and we measure how fast that water moves into the soil. It's an indication for how much space there is in the soil for rainfall to fill up before the soil does start to get flooded. And we're done. Now we need to, to investigate a bit lower down. Look at how deep the roots go. They'll be delivering energy to that depth, whatever depth they go. That means that there's energy for microbes which are going to improve that soil structure. We then do the surface soil tests of the penetrometer and the infiltrometer at 20 centimetres. It can indicate changes in soil structure down the profile. If we can improve depth of that soil structure, we improve water holding capacity and also improve the capacity to cope with long periods of heavy rain, which is significant for a lot of our tree crops. Improving soil structure and maintaining ground cover are really important about minimising erosion and soil degradation. With our structural test, we took a lump, see how it breaks up very easily and readily into a mixture of smaller and larger crumb sizes. We also take soil peds and put them in water and agitate the water to determine the stability of the peds because what we want are stable peds that don't fall apart when they get wet. If the soil gets very wet from rain or irrigation and they break up, the structure's dissipating easily. So we'll see what happens. We drop it in and we're going to wait for 60 seconds. So the swirling broke it up into some finer aggregates, but the water is still clear. The beauty about soil structure is that it's something that we can fix, rehabilitate. The more earthworms you have, the healthier the soil. They're such a good indicator for soil health. So we can look into that excavated soil, looking particularly for earthworms. <laughs> look at this. I got, that's four. That's three and a baby. Don't stand back, Jeff's that. getting excited. Yeah. <laughs> I am excited. pH is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity in the soil. Closest match is with six. This one's the 20 centimetre. It's really showing up a bit lighter coloured. Those root systems moving down there can also help deliver minerals down there which will be changing that soil pH and organic matter down there which buffers soil pH. I'll be sitting at pH 5 at 20 centimetres. Final test is to look at the colour of vegetation, see if it indicates any trace element or major element deficiencies. So we've got vegetation on the ground covers, the leaves look to be a good colour and no deficiencies showing up generally in the ground vegetation. 
and also the crop of the adjacent tree. You're doing that in five sites, so if we see any major variations uh, on the five sites, the average of those sites giving us our final score. doesn't involve expensive equipment or consultants to be able to give you a lot of information about the situation your soil is at as far as its health goes. Get out there and dig and enjoy nature and, and uh, listen to the lessons that it teaches us because it teaches us lots of things.